right, I guess we have to talk about The Handmaid's Tale. Uh, in last night's or yesterday's uh, episode on Hulu, uh, it's the first episode with June in Canada, free, finally free from Gilead, at least physically. I think mentally, psycho, you know, emotionally, spiritually, June is still very much under the throes of Gilead's rule. I mean, she's deeply traumatized, suffering from PTSD. She's all messed up. Um, like, like Moira says, at one point, what happened to them left them all like fucked up about sex. But it, not just sex, just about relationships, about you know their sense of security and safety, their sense of belonging. Um, June, in particular, I think has this has this feeling that you know normal life. Is something she doesn't really deserve and doesn't really know how to embrace. And of course, it's very early days for her, but right off the bat, you can tell that she doesn't want to be around Luke. She doesn't want to be alone with Luke. Um, that that makes her uncomfortable. Maybe not because she's like literally afraid of him, but just doesn't know how to go back into an intimate relationship with him, um, sexually, emotionally, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so she does what she can to kind of avoid that, including inviting Rita and Emily over and just, you know, going with Moira when Moira tries to give them some alone time, whatever she can do to get away from that. And at one point in the episode, she cannot sleep. She goes to the embassy and co confronts Serena. And this is actually a really powerful scene. I think Elizabeth Moss does a really good job. Uh, just She's just so angry. She just really lets Serena have it. Serena thinks she can make amends. And June makes it very clear that this is not going to happen. Um, and it's it's really, it's a powerful scene. And I think June, at the end of this, feels very empowered. It, it feels sort of like, not revenge, but like finally she's been able to say her complete truth to Serena. And really, really let this horrible human being know how she feels. And Serena is a deeply, deeply horrible person. Um probably a sociopath, certainly an empty, vapid, self-obsessed obs human being. And it's interesting because June really seems to loathe her and hate her more than anyone else, including Fred, who is, you know, um, not a great guy. Anyways, after this, getting to the meat of, the, of this discussion, after this, June goes home and has sex with her husband. Uh, and this is a surprise because earlier, of course, she couldn't even, like kiss him without feeling really, really uncomfortable. Um, but this, this adrenaline, this rush that she has, she kind of uh, rolls with that and she goes home, wakes him up, kisses him, strokes him, mounts him, and he tries to touch her, she pins his hand down, he starts to say, wait, and she covers his mouth and then proceeds to climax. Luke doesn't seem to have a great time and a lot of people are saying, well, this is rape. June must have raped him. She pinned his hand down, she wouldn't let him, she wouldn't let him say no, no means no, um, and then she continued to have sex with him even after he said, wait. Uh, I, I think that we have to be really, really careful when we, when we start talking about rape, um, because to me this scene was, was very awkward and clearly was more about June's own, you know, power and agency rather than an intimate romantic moment with her husband. I think that, you know, watching this from, I guess, a man's perspective, considering that this was a man who was apparently being assaulted here, I think I think it's perfectly normal to feel, first of all, to feel surprised when you're woken up to have sex, because, um, you know, that, that's kind of surprising, because you're asleep and then suddenly you're awake, and um, I think it's that this particular encounter, it's just there's so much baggage, right? They haven't had sex in years. They have barely been intimate, she's barely been home, and then all of a sudden it's happening. And for him, it's probably very confusing and startling. And so I think when he was saying, wait, he he was mostly looking to make sure that everything was okay. Like, like wait, are you are we sure about it? Like, is this really how you want this to go down? Like, this is not probably how he pictured it in his mind, in his fantasy of their, you know, coming together, coupling for the first time in, you know, years and years. Um, and so all that emotional baggage, all the sexual baggage, I mean, all couples for the most part have some sort of sexual baggage. So all of that kind of in this maelstrom of emotion 
and weirdness and she just i think just really needed to be in charge of her own sexuality for a minute because she's spent years as as a slave uh, as a sex slave as someone who has been raped and tortured repeatedly i don't think she was trying to take that and do that to someone else i don't think that what june was doing was trying to assault her husband i think she was simply in order for her to even have sex, needed to be in control. And that might be a new dynamic between them, assuming that they even stay together, which I think is unlikely. Um, June is going to need to have control to feel safe. And Luke is going to need to learn how to let go of it. Um, and I think he did. Uh, I, I just think, you know, if you're going to call something rape, you should probably call the cops, right? Do we think that June should go to jail for this? Did she really rape him? I think that if, if Luke didn't want to have sex, he could have easily stopped it from happening. Um, now I know people will say, well, that doesn't mean it's not rape. Well, sure. Sexual assault and rape happens where the, where one person is acquiescent. That does happen. It not, it's not like in every case of rape, someone fights back, but given everything else, given Luke wants to be with this woman, given that I think he wants to have sex with her as well. Uh, I don't think that it's, I don't think it's responsible to call it rape. Now, was it an awkward sex scene? Was it weird? Sure. But weird, awkward sex is not the same as sexual assault. Weird, awkward sex, I mean, that's, that's not, lots of people, everyone goes through some sort of awkward or weird sexual experience, and I don't think that we can just call any of them, however fraught with emotional complexities, however strange, rape. So that's my two cents. I think that, um, I think we've kind of lost the thread when we talk about consent and when we talk about sex, not because we shouldn't want to have consensual sex, but because sex is often a nonverbal engagement. I mean, people speak through their bodies. People speak, they talk about sex without talking, you know? Sex is initiated and carried out without vocalization. And I don't think that, um, I, I don't think that we can say that, you know, every sexual encounter has to have, you know, a signed contract or a verbal yes. Would, w would you like to have sex with me right now? Yes, I consent to that. That's not sexy talk, right? That's just not human nature. The mating ritual is, is uh, it's, it's as much instinct as it is logical thought. I mean, the, the, the logical thinking brain is, this, is the sex destroyer, right? So this is a tough question. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that was rape. But I really see that more as a, as a awkward, difficult moment for Luke, but something that maybe was also empowering for June. And ultimately, as a couple, this is the sort of thing that they're just going to have to work through, just like every couple has to work through these things. And to just write it off as rape or sexual assault, I think, cheapens rape and sexual assault and diminishes a complicated relationship that and a, and a complicated story. And I, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of complicated stories and complicated relationships, and I like where this one's going. Uh, and I think we shouldn't just write it off as something just truly terrible, but rather something awkward and difficult and something to think about and discuss. So always love to hear you guys' thoughts. Thank you so, for, so much for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell. Definitely ring the bell. It makes a beautiful sound. So um, it's just right down there. All right. Thanks. Peace. <laughs>